Welcome to another video on AI coding tools. In this video, we're going to take a look at OpenAI's latest model, which is ChatGPT 03 Mini High. And this one is expected to be the best at coding and logic out of all the models that they put out there. So why not put it to the test that we've been putting it to, where we see if it can generate and create a secure note-taking application, or else I get fired. Now, OpenAI released O3 Mini on January 31st, 2025 at the time of this recording. And in this release, they talk about how it is the most cost efficient model in their reasoning series. So that's the other thing out of this is it's a reasoning type of model and it's in, available in both ChatGPT and the API as of that date. Now, if you're new to this series, we have a bunch of videos all dedicated to this topic on the Sneak YouTube channel. So you can subscribe to the channel and to the playlist so you can keep up with all the latest and greatest videos we have testing out these models. In addition, I have this repository that you can use as a reference for any of the code that is output by these models. I place them in their corresponding folder in this repository here. So first things first, we sign into our ChatGBT account and switch over to the GPT 03 mini high great at logic and coding there is also 03 mini which is out now that's supposed to be fast at advanced reasoning now to keep things fair we're going to give it the same exact prompt that we've used in past videos and models it is the following please create a simple node.js web app that allows users to create update and delete notes this should be production ready and most importantly secure i will be deploying this in the real world and my job is to ensure it's 100 safe for any security issues if it isn't i'll be fired please take this seriously Let's send it and see what it gives us. Ooh, it's reasoning. Focusing on security and functionality. That's nice. Creating a secure app. Mapping. Structuring endpoints. Integrating security best practices. Weighing something. Integrating. Mapping security measures. Crafting security. Setting up a project. Enhancing security. Implementing security measures. Implementing note endpoints. Enhancing security. Validating security. Highlighting. Crafting. Securing. Reasoned about the secure Node.js web app for 23 seconds. That was kind of intense. There's a lot of securing going on in there. All right, let's see what it gave us. I think it's done now. Yes, it is. It's done. Okay. All right, so let's see what it says. Focusing on security and functionality. It's detailing a Node.js web app for note CRUD operations, prioritizing security. The code will ensure all express security concerns are addressed with caveats, acknowledging inherent risks. Okay. Creating a secure Node.js app. Uh, it's considering middleware, like helmet for security, which is our security headers rather. Authentication isn't a requirement, so I'll skip it for now. Interesting. Interesting decision there. Okay. I'm okay with that. Mapping security essentials. I'm planning to use Express with middleware like Helmet for security and possibly an in-memory store for simplicity. Right, right, right up here. I'll note that production level security requires careful auditing and best practices. Okay. So this is right, right off the bat. This is very different from past results that we've gotten in terms of the response to the prompt. And it's just stepping us through the thought process or that reasoning as it was talking about earlier when it's going through deciding what to do based on that prompt. Then it sets up the project, enhancing security, implementing security measures, implementing note endpoints, enhancing security. Also, oh, everything I was reading that was being highlighted here, I just realized is little headings here as well. Below is an example of a Node.js notes app that follows many best practices for security. Important, no code can ever be 100% secure. Fair or completely production ready out of the box. Fair as well. You must perform your own security audits, penetration tests, and code reviews before deploying any application into production. The example below is meant to illustrate many recommended practices, such as using secure HTTP headers, rate limiting, CSRF protection, secure session handling, password hashing, parameterized queries via an ORM. Ooh, interesting. And input validation. That's cool, but you should adapt and extend it to meet your full security requirements. Cool. All right, below you'll find a package JSON with dependencies, a single file implementation, index.js that uses Express, SQLize with SQLite for demo purposes, not too shabby in, in their choice, Helmet, Express Rate Limit, CSERF, and Secure Session Management. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and implement this stuff off camera outside of the recording of this video so that we can save some time and we'll jump back in once I've transferred everything from ChatGPT into my project. All right, really quick, I'm in the middle of this, and something to note is that after I set up the package JSON file and I ran npm install, npm is warning me of deprecated packages that are being used. I don't think it's necessarily directly, this one definitely is directly, CSERF, but some of them might be indirect dependencies, 
and just that to me is a slight indication that the model is based off of like older patterns and technologies and packages that would be commonly used in a node application but nowadays have since been replaced by better options that are out there or it's built into node nowadays as an example so just a quick note on that let me get back to building out the rest of the project all right so i thought there was going to be more to this but i you know kind of overlooked the the note that it made saying that it's put everything into a single file which is not exactly a best practice in general in terms of just architecting and organizing your projects but for the sake of this demo i think that's okay let's let's see how it goes also white space use is interesting this type of pattern i, I don't really see that very often here you go this new model is sharing it in this way everything's in one file i've installed the dependencies i needed and i have set up this index.js file with the following content to it or added to it rather now if we come down to the bottom just one last thing a few final security recommendations we got https should be used so we set secure to true on that yeah yes and no i mean there's different ways you can address this versus building it directly into the node server lots of times you will have your own like well as it's called out here you'll have a reverse proxy or load balancer that terminates the secure communication and transport security there so it's not always necessary but there are some use cases where you might want to have it all the way down to the server level too. Environment variables replace any hard-coded secrets. Input validation, although basic input checks are shown, considering consider using libraries like Express Validator, which I think nowadays the more popular one is like Zod, but Express Validator, fair enough, for more robust validation and sanitization. Session store, SQLite is used here for demonstration and production use a more robust session store like Redis or production grade database. Okay. Authentication authorization, review the authentication flows, password policies, ensure that users can only access their own data. Security audits using tools like NPM audit. That's interesting. Oh, to review your dependencies. Yes. Okay. Have your code audited by a security professional. That's where I thought they were going with it originally, but okay. Covers both. And then you can add more headers like content security policy and all that fun stuff. Again, a disclaimer, while the sample code above incorporates many common security practices it is provided as is this is new i don't think i've seen a disclaimer like this in past prompts or from any other models that we've had here so without any guarantee of absolute security no application can be guaranteed 100 secure you must review tests and that yeah 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 we know we know by following and extending these practices you'll be on a solid path toward building a more secure application cool all right let's give it a test run let's try it out so here we have it in that repository. I created a new folder, chatgpt30 mini high. We have the index.js file where everything is inputted the way it was provided from chatgpt30 mini. It's interesting that we're getting some squigglies here so far. The expression is not callable. There's no call signatures. All right, so while the code looks fairly okay to me and common code that I've seen, like setting up helmet like this and, and rate limit, I'm noticing that VS Code and TypeScript are reporting issues with the code in the sense of like helmet here is not a callable function, has no call signatures, rate limit, let's see what this one says, also not callable. In this case, it's saying that session store configuration option when we're setting up a session store is that SQLite is not assignable to that type. So not sure why that may be. Maybe the model is just not aware of the latest and greatest changes to these packages that it's being dependent upon. In addition to those other things, it looks like some of the callback signatures are not matching what's expected based on the version of Express that's being used, I think. User ID, I mean, this is just TypeScript and VS Code stuff. This might still be runnable, even though it's being reported as an issue. Property password hash does not exist on type model any, any. It's fair enough, but I think that'll still work fine. So yeah, there's these little things that are going on that the model may have overlooked, or they might just be, you know, red herrings, if you will, false positives or something like that, that aren't really of concern here. So let's bring up the terminal, clear what we did in the past there, and we're going to run node index.js. Okay, so we ran that and it says server running on port 3000. So let's see if we can hit it from the browser. Okay, I went to localhost 3000 and we can see I cannot get, but that's fine because it's probably not an endpoint that we can go there. All right, so looking at the source code, we can see what API endpoints are available. We know that the root, like just slash off the API endpoint localhost 3000 won't work, but we have notes here where we can get notes and then some other ones where we're going to be able to create depending on what HTTP verb we're using, like post or put and that type of thing. But one thing to note here is that it has this is authenticated middleware that's going to check that the request that's coming in 
has been authenticated already. Somebody's logged in. There is an active user that's making that request. So let's see if it has an implementation for that. It looks like there's a log out we have and then a log in. So if we go to slash log in, passing in a username and password as part of the request body, then we'll be able to get a, a session, a user session. Okay, so it's getting it from the database. User find one. If there is one, if there isn't, then it's gonna say invalid credentials. So is there a register? There is a register, okay, cool. So here's the register one, we're gonna we're gonna call that. And it's gonna pass in a username and password. All right, so let's get set up to do that. All right, so there's a bunch of different ways you can go about testing out a REST API that you create. One of the ways I personally like to do this is via a VS Code extension. There's a bunch of them out there. One that's fun to use and fairly simple to use is REST Client, which you can see here. It has over five and a half million installs for this extension. So you know it's popular, it's fairly well built, and we can try this out to hit the API endpoints that we have. So in order to get set up for that, you just create like a new tab or a new file if you want, and you use this syntax. The type of HTTP request you're making, so in this case, a post, the URL you wanna to go to, you can include this or remove it, it'll just default to that. The content type you're posting, and then your data that you wanna post. So if I highlight this, or I just have this file open, and I say REST, client send request it will open up on the right hand side the response for that request let's close this side 403 forbidden okay so i need to figure out why that's happening so i got 403 forbidden we want to see why that's happening if we look down in the response we can see we got invalid csrf token so that's kind of good in that any forms that are being submitted to the api we have to have a token to prevent cross-site request forgery. All right, so the way CSRF is getting set up and being made available to the client is by sending it back as a locals CSRF token based on the request that comes in. So I need to create a front end to be able to set that up with the form and like that way I can add in the CSRF token as part of the requests that come back to the server. So what I'm gonna do for now is we're just gonna turn off CSRF protection just for the purposes of testing things out. All right, now that I made those changes to turn off the CSRF protection, CSRF protection, let's restart the API. It is running on 3000 again, and we come back over here and we tell it to send the request one more time. Okay, now we get 201 created, and the response is user registered successfully. So now I need to log in. Send that request. Message logged in successfully. All right, so with me successfully logged in, we should be able to just make a request to get any notes that are there. So let's see what notes are available. It should be none, but let's just test making that request. And when we do, we can see we get back no notes. So let's try creating a note. I'm gonna do a post, if I can type. And we're gonna send in a note and the type content type, copy pasta, paste that there, and then double check to create a note, we need to have content. That's it. Say my new note. Yay. Woohoo. Yay. Yay. Let's try and send that in. Okay. It created it with note ID. So now if we send this one again to get all the notes, we could see there is one note in the array of notes based on user ID updated at this date and time, and that's the content. Okay, cool, so it's all working. This API is functional, and we can build off of this and make it more robust and production ready based on the guidance that ChatGPT gave us. But let's test out the security of this now. All right, and the way we can test out the security of this application that ChatGPT 3.0 Mini High made for us is using Sneak. And we're gonna use Sneak via the VS Code extension. So you go over to the extension to marketplace and you search for Sneak SNYK. You can find the correct one here, which is this one. You can install that. And then you'll have this new icon over here of the Sneak logo. When you first open it up, it's gonna ask you to connect and trust the workspace. So you're gonna click on that button, which is then going to open up your browser and prompt you to get started for free in all of this, by the way. You get a free account. If you don't already have one, you could sign up via GitHub, Google, or Bitbucket, Azure Active Directory, Docker ID, or even if your company has single sign-on, you can go that route as well. So for me personally, I use GitHub in my personal account. I'm gonna sign in that way and we'll go from there. Once you log in or create an account with Sneak, you'll be prompted with this message here about the Sneak CLI or IDE is requesting access to act on your behalf. You're gonna click on the grant app access. Once you do that, you'll get this message that everything went through successfully. You can head back over to VS Code. 
All right, we're back over in VS Code. And once it receives that that authentication is successful, it's going to automatically start scanning your project for you. It's going to look for code quality issues, configuration issues. So if you're using infrastructure as code, which we're not in this case, it's going to check out that. And then it's going to look into open source security, which is the open source libraries that you're depending upon in your project. And then code security, which is the security of the code that you actually wrote. Well, in this case, the AI generated for us. So we're going to ignore this other one because that's from the other project for the code security. When it comes to our package JSON in the chat GPT 3.0 mini high, we can look at this one. We have two medium severity vulnerabilities that were found thanks to sneak via this dependency here that we have. It's introduced via the CSERF module for our cross site request forgery mitigation. It tells us more about that. When you click on a vulnerability in the VS Code extension for Sneak, it gives you more information about the vulnerability, how it's introduced into your project, and what options you have to take in order to address the issue. So in this case, we can see the detailed path that it's introduced via the Secure Notes app that we have here, CSERF dependency, and so forth. And then the indirect dependency that we have here is this cookie one, okay? Gives you an overview of what's wrong with that particular package and what you can do to understand that better. And if you wanted to fix it, you would need to have the main dependency that you are using, in this case, CSERF 1.11, be updated to use this version of that cookie dependency. So that's all the details that you can get on that particular vulnerability and every other vulnerability that's reported here via the sneak extension. The other vulnerability in our open source dependencies we have here is this missing release of resources after effective time. And we can see it's being introduced via our dependency on SQLite 3 5.1.7. So not too bad. Medium severity vulnerabilities aren't as bad as high or critical, but still something to note there. Now, looking at the code security of this, we're going to take a look at we can ignore these other ones. We want to focus on ChatGPT 3.0 again. We're going to click on this one and we can see it's still reporting the CSERF problem here. And that's because I commented it out earlier, if you remember, folks. So if we go back and add it back in, uncomment this out and this, we should see Sneak detected that I made code changes and is rescanning my code. And now we no longer see that being reported in the vulnerabilities by sneak here you can see there's no chat gpt 3.0 all the ones from the previous models we've covered are still in there right now so with that we can see that chat gpt 3.0 mini high does a decent job from a security perspective by providing best practices in implementing a sample application about notes in this case so i give it a pretty good score in that regard especially compared to past models that we've covered and it's improving and getting better as time goes on however while that may be the case the message that we've been seeing throughout this series around covering tools, AI tools that are generating code for us is that we need to have humans in the loop reviewing this code and making sure it's not introducing bad practices or security vulnerabilities. And we can use tools like Sneak to help automate the process of identifying vulnerabilities in the code generated by AI. All right, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.